Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? <coughs> it's Big Pork here, still the voice of hardcore boxing and I'm joined today by Rocky Balboa How are you doing Rocky? How long have you been a boxing fan? How long have you been a boxing fan? Long? No, you're going quiet on me, okay You're not a boxing fan at all Rocky, no? You don't want to say out, you're going no comment Good man Right, uh, we're going to talk now about <coughs> Fury and Wilder. Now, Fury and Wilder two. We heard all the all the chit chat from Mr. Bean, Adam Smith. Bean, run a bean, could have been, should have been, never been, bait bean, beanie. We heard all the chit chat about where we would have liked to have get the fight and all that and now that they've not got the fight Eddie Earns running about saying that Sky put such a massive bid in for it that BT Sport had to bid a massive bid and they're not going to make anything off it. I don't believe that. I think that Tyson Fury against John T. Wilder sells itself doesn't it really. If the fight happens next month it's the biggest fight in boxing it's the heavyweight championship of the world you've got the man who was undefeated who was the lineal champion tyson and you've got wilder if tyson beats wilder he's got every belt in boxing hasn't he that you can that he can fight for he's got everything he's cleaned up he's got the full clean sweep and he would have only won two world title fights but he's got every belt He'll have all six belts for heavyweights, the five normal belts, WBA, WBC, IBO, IBF, WBO, them five, and he'll have the ring belt, six, so as far as I'm concerned, Tyson Fury, if he beats Wilder, he's the man, isn't he? Throw Joshua into the mix, but he's been high standing now, and... Eddie Hearn's a boxing man. Eddie Hills, whatever he's called, 4 0 super heavyweight from amateurs. We know footage. Where's your footage, Eddie? But well, Eddie Hearn knows boxing. And we all know boxing. People who tune into my channel, they all know boxing. You go and watch Joshua against Andy Ruiz. He's throwing a punch, but he's coming back at the same time. That's the. That's a fighter that's frightened to death. Gun shy, they call it. Gun shy, don't let his hands go. So, Sky Sports didn't win the, the bid to stage the fight. So it's going to be on BT Sport. Tyson Fury says he's got three fights left. I don't believe that. Anything that Tyson Fury says he's done for effect, he's done to grab your attention. Oh, he's only got three fights left. We need to watch this because we're watching greatness before our eyes. Well, look, Tyson's profile is off the charts. It's massive. But when all said and done, when everybody's stopped chanting his name and going on about it, when he puts his head down on that pillar in the cold light of day, Tyson Fury has got one world title win. One. And he's got no losses in world titles and he's got a draw. So he's one win and a draw. That's it. When all said and done, he's got as many wins in world title fights as Glenn Catley. Do you remember him? <clears throat> From Bristol or Fleetwood or whatever. One win in world title fights. One. Buster Douglas. He's got one winning world title fights. Bit of a great win, wasn't it, Mike, against Mike Tyson? So, what's the matter with you? What's the matter? Come on, come on. Right. Uh, let's have a look. Mr. Bean. Bean! Runner Bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Bait Bean. Beanie. Bean bag. Beanie says there's going to be a minimum, a minimum this year, 
of six pay-per-view on Sky minimum. There could even be seven. There could even be more. But he's saying there's a minimum. Now, if you remember, I said they were going to put the pay-per-view up, didn't I, for Joshua Ruiz to 25 quid. And everybody said, oh, you're making stuff up. I was the only one that said it. I was the only one. Dennis says, what are you coming out with that for? I said, well, just keep watching. And they put it up to 25 quid, didn't they? All right. Now, I can assure you, when they fight Tyson Fury, it'll be 30 quid. Price of a pizza, in it, to Eddie Hearn? Now, people can say you're making stuff up. No, 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 no. I'm not. Before I became obsessed by boxing 15 years ago, I was obsessed by snooker. Mainly pool, but snooker as well. And now, obviously, the Hearns own world snooker, don't they? And I know how they, how, they, how they work things. And they've took their, their structure and concepts from the snooker world into the darts world. And they're bringing them, they're bringing them now into the boxing world. So, you know, what's the matter? So, look at it like this. It's going to be 30 quid when Fury fights him. They're going to look to do two and a half million buys. Two and a half million buys at 30 quid. That's 75 million. 75 million alone. Who knows? They may even, they may even do three million. They may put a bumper show on and charge 40 quid. But it'll be more than 25 quid. Because if you're paying 25 quid to watch for, for Joshua to fight in Saudi against a fat Mexican. What are they going to pay for Joshua Fury at Wembley Stadium or Old Trafford or something like that? They're going to pay fortunes, aren't you? So you could even pay 40 quid. You could do 3 million buys at 40 quid. People would group in, wouldn't they, and go around people's houses all chipping a tenner. That's what they'd want you to do. They'd put 120 million in the pot. And we, we all commercial stuff off it and selling TV rights, it'd be a quarter of a billion. Right? That's how much it'd be a quarter of a bit, 250 million fight. Now the fight could even end up in Saudi, it could end up in China. You know, it could end up in Macau. Do you know what I mean? But trust me, boxing fans are just going to get abused even more, but so Sky say they're going to put a minimum of six on, that means they're going to put more on. So I'm advising people out there to go and get a fire stick. If you get a fire stick for your TV, all it is is a chipped Amazon stick. Amazon stick that's chipped. You get thousands of videos on it and you'll get, you can watch football on a Saturday afternoon at three o'clock. Any, any match in the country. I watch Donny Rovers on mine. So you can get all, all stuff like that. You can watch films, you can even watch Dallas from 1978 to 1991. I watched Dallas, me. So, go and do that, that's some good advice. Get a fire stick, why give Sky your money? Get Sky or BT Sport and just pay for your, your internet connection, that's all you need to do. And then go get a stick. So, save money that way. If BT put four on a year and Sky do six, or if they do seven and BT do three, what's that? Ten pay-per-views a year, 25 quid for a pay-per-view, that's 250 quid in pay-per-view alone. But look at all other extras you're going to get, all football and all videos and stuff like that. Go and get a stick. Why give these your money? So, most improved UK in the uh, fighter at the moment. For me, that's Liam Williams. Uh, Although now, in the last couple of days, there's going to be a question mark against that because he's an Ingle fighter. And of course, uh, we've now got three people under Dominic Ingle's watch that have failed dope tests. So, two of them have served bans and we're just waiting for the outcome with that uh, Eves and Bagu. So, but it's not good, is it? If three have been caught, how many haven't been caught? What don't... We know what's going on when they're free, but what's going on don't we know about? I don't know, but it's in exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much. Huh, yeah. 
I'm getting like tie on boat here drinking wine on on uh on telly sat with my dog. Don't look like I'm not fetching my glasses on now. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Liam Williams in my opinion, he really is that good. And I wanna see him versus Beefy Smith at middleweight. Well, this were all wrote out before it came out about that drug test, but Liam Williams has not failed a dope test, so people should get behind him. He's a fantastic fighter. He seems to be uh, took on a new lease of life since he's gone to middleweight. Uh, will AJ vacate the IBF belt? Or will he fight Pool F? I think he'll vacate. But if he does fight Pool F, we'd want to see that. The Hearns look at it like it's money on the table, don't they? You know, the Pool F, not fighting Pool F. Uh, they look at it like they sold out Cardiff with Pool left before and they'll do it again but Joshua were big nose then when he went when he sold out Cardiff and Pool left pulled out didn't he with 12 days to go so they parachuted in Tackham didn't they so which were an easy win for Joshua wasn't it although I thought Tackham were getting to him in later rounds uh, Martin Bacoli and Billy Nelson are making noise about fighting Ergovic be, re be very careful about what you wish for, Billy Nelson. I think Ergovic just walked straight through Bacoli, punches him upside down, smashes him to bits. Uh, Dubois is now the WBO number three. All we're hearing is silence from uh, Daniel Dubois team regarding fighting uh, Juggernaut Joe Joyce. I think that's a good fight and I think it's well worth pay-per-view that fight. Will Frank Warren want to risk Daniel Dubois against Joe Joyce? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure at all. Uh, did Al Heyman tell Andy Ruiz to fire Manny Robles? I'm hearing that he did. Uh, personally, I think the book stops with the trainer. The trainer let Andy Ruiz get in the in the ring with Anthony Joshua fat as a pig. Now, if you're going to get in the ring fat as a pig like that, what what does it say what you think to fans? I mean, people are saying Andy Ruiz were out of control after they won world title. Well, if you want to celebrate, fair enough. Some people don't handle it good when they win the heavyweight championship of the world, do they? Something happens to them and they don't handle it good. Tyson Fury didn't handle it very good, did he? Uh, I don't think Andy Ruiz handled it very good at all. Uh, so, after he got on scales, before he fought Joshua, as soon as he got on scales that big, I was like, oh my God, what's going on here? Another Buster Douglas job, wasn't it? But you've got to give him credit. Uh, he did beat him and he had his night, didn't he, that night? Uh, will he have a bit same fighter again? No, I don't think he'll have a bit same fighter again. Does Joshua beat him in a rematch yet? Joshua's got the blueprint now, and he had to beat Andy Ruiz. You just don't get involved in a, in a tear up with him. If you get involved in a tear up with Andy Ruiz, he'd take you down, won't he? Because he's got fast hands. Joshua didn't want to fight him, but what, what Andy Ruiz should have done, he should have just jumped on him. But what do I know? It's just an opinion. I'm just a fat wine drinking uh, troll sat at home, aren't I, Aunt Seti, giving an opinion. Only difference is I don't live with my mum. <laughs> um, I've not lived with my mum for about 30 years, so 30 odd years, I think. But anyway, but a lot of people get a lot of stick, don't they, who do YouTube's channels? Oh, they live with their mum. No, I certainly don't. Uh, so Bacoli gets beat. Uh, against Ergovic if it happens why do Sky Sports keep digging up Povetkin who's 42 next year FFS for F-U-C-K sake well they keep digging up Povetkin because he's still a name in it he did hold a, a version at world title years ago regular belt I think and Povetkin brings Russian TV money to the table doesn't he same as Parker. Parker's poo to watch, isn't he? But he brings New Zealand TV money to the table, doesn't he? So, 
Tyson says Usek is a no name. Uh, he ain't got a profile and that he's not worth fighting. Now, Alexander Usek is an Olympic heavyweight gold medalist. The same year Anthony Joshua won the Olympic gold medal at super heavyweight. Usek's a Southport, he's undefeated. And he has won seven world title fights. Tyson Fury's an orthodox fighter. He has won one world title fight. So Alexander Husek to to disrespect Alexander Husek like that is not very nice, is it? I don't think. Alexander Husek could quite possibly possibly be the best heavyweight in world boxing at the moment. Uh, Tyson's an ex-champion, he won a world title in 2015, one world title fight, he won it five years ago, you know it's uh, it's not 2015 no more Tyson, it's 2020 and you're in the fight of your life coming off the back of a stinker against Otto Wallin where you had all your face cut in half didn't you? You know, so Tyson Fury getting rid of Stitch Stitch Durana as well. I don't agree with that. Uh, for simple reason, Stitch Duran uh, did well for Tyson Fury, didn't he? Really, Stitch Duran. He did really, really well for Tyson. He had a bad cut, and he turned the fight around for him, didn't he, Stitch? So. Tyson's got rid of him now and he's got another cut man in, hasn't he? Oh, sorry, sorry, he wants, he wants Stitch Duran. Stitch Duran's the new guy, isn't it? He? He's got in. Tyson's got rid of that old guy, hasn't he? The, the guy who, who saved him. Well, the guy that saved Tyson's face, I think that he should have kept him and not gone with Stitch Duran as the cut man because he's, he's showing a bit of loyalty, aren't you? If you do that. There's some more of this, Rocky. I'm going to try this. Tell that bit of spice off for you. You like that? You like that? Hey. Oops. It's spicy that, isn't it, Rob? Right? But er uh, um, let's have a look what else has been happening. We spoke about Andy Ruiz sacking his trainer. I want to talk about Scott Quigg's show. Now, we'll speak, we'll speak about the Dave Allen show. I think that February 8th show is not a bad show, is it really? I know there's five fighters on there that are all prospects, ranging from... 1 or 2 and 0, up to 11 and 0. Uh, Terry Harper's on there in a world title fight. She's 9 and 0. She'd really be a prospect, wouldn't she? But in female division, there's only seven people in Terry Harper's weight division in England. And there's only 122 women in the whole world who fight in that weight division. So if you're 9 and 0, You'll get a world title pretty easy, won't you? But if there's five belts, right, and there's 20 people in each division, five belts, that's 100 people, isn't it? There's only 122. There's only 122 women in the world who fight it that way. Five belts, 20 ago, that's 100 people in it, so it's pretty easy to get a world title quick. The world title is a world title, so and it's a unification fight. So Terry's IBO belt online and a WBC belt. So it's an interesting fight, isn't it? I mean, you've got one girl, 23, the other one's is she 39 or something. But it doesn't matter, does it, about age. She brings the belt to the table, doesn't she, that Wallstrom. So it should be a good fight. Should be a good fight. There's other people on the show. Dave Allen. He's not a prospect though now. Is he? Should be. 
Dave Allen should be looking at going for a British title now, shouldn't he? He'll, I think he'll be waiting to see if the belts are going to be vacated, one or are they already vacating? They're, they're going to have to wait for Debar, aren't they? See what he's doing first. But I'd like to see Dave Allen against Nick Webb. I think that's a good fight. It's a rematch. It's a good fight. Uh, so good luck to Dave Allen. Good luck to Opie Price. Good luck to Galahad. Good luck to. Uh, the Babby, Kel the Babby Brook, Eddie Fox fans, good luck to Kel Brook as well. The Scott Quigg show is the one that I like though, uh, I'm not a Scott Quigg fan but Callum Johnson, I'm a Callum Johnson fan, I like to see Callum Johnson do well and win a European title, then he's got British come off European, he'll look to jump in front of the world title then. But it's all worked out very nice, nice and cosy for Joe Gallagher though, hasn't it? He's got Scott Quigg back, he's got him headlining, he's got Callum Johnson on the show. I mean, it's strange that, isn't it? Scott Quigg, going back to Joe Gallagher, I don't get that. Why would Joe take him back after all that was said? Why would Scott go back? This is why, you, this is why trainers and managers and boxers, they can be horse, can't they? I'm not saying everybody is, but there's no pride, is there? Where there's a pound note, is people ain't got no pride. I mean, I don't know. Well, yeah, okay. You dropped it on the eat scrubber. So, what are you laying up for for now? What are you laying up for? <laughs> he's laying up for now because he knows he's done wrong. <laughs> Look at that. Look at him laying up for now. You laying up for? <laughs> you know you've done wrong, don't you? You get me in trouble. You get me in trouble. You know we're not allowed to eat in here. Well, getting back to Scott Quigg, right? Scott Quigg, he's headlining, isn't he? Kel Brook, he's headlining. Scott Quigg's not fought in England since 2017. Kel Brook's just had 14 months out of boxing, right? These people are being given headline headline acts the headlining shows but yeah the headlining shows and it's recycled stuff in it why can't they let other keep other people headline why can't Callum Johnson headline he's been in Ubertabia is it because he doesn't sell loads of tickets? I don't know, but he's a, he's a Commonwealth gold medalist. Why can't he headline? Why can't Sky uh, do a different narrative and just get other people involved in boxing instead of the same old people? I mean, it says a lot, doesn't it, for where Sky Sports are heading when they're having to dig up Scott Quigg. Do you know what I mean? Who turned, his, who turned his back on England a few years ago. He hadn't fought in England since 2017, as I've just said. So, yeah, I won't drop it this time. Come here, yeah. You like that? Spicy that, innit? it? <coughs> you okay? Do you want a drink? Well, 
You want some chicken or something? Want some dinner? Are you okay, Rocky? Me? Are you alright? Me? Are you sure? Okay, wish I had a tongue like yours, Rocky. You can lick your eye, can't you? <laughs> Uh, we spoke about we spoke about Quig, haven't we? Quig and Gallagher. I mean, they can't stand sight of each other. But Joe Gallagher needed Quig, didn't he? He needs him. You see, a trainer, how it works? He wants to get as many people on that show as he can. And he get paid, doesn't he? Joe Gallagher knows the game inside out. He's now promoting, so. That's why you can never shut him up when he's at press conferences. He's good at talking about Joe Gallagher, same as Dominic Ingle. Dominic Ingle loves nothing better than sitting down on IFL and talking about himself. Unbelievable. Let the fighters fight and the trainers should stay in the background. You don't see Mark Tibbs or Jimmy Tibbs hogging like that, do you? Right. Yeah. Trainers should train and they should be in the background. Now, Dillian White against Ruiz Povetkin. I think he'll back fight Povetkin. I think Ruiz is an hard fight for Dillian. I think he knows a fit under Ruiz. Can put his lights out. Povetkin, there's, he's gone at game now. Uh, the Ruiz and Povetkin are basically Joshua leftovers, aren't they? I mean, how many more times is are we going to see... Joshua fights somebody on pay-per-view and then the loser, which is usually Joshua's opponent, ends up with Dillian White. But if Joshua loses, he rematches them and then they still end up with Dillian White. So Ruiz beat Joshua, then he lost. He still ended up fighting Dillian White. Povetkin the same, so it's going to be one of them. Derek Chisora against Usyk, I think that's a good fight, but Derek Chisora... Keeps going on about how his mates with Tony Bellew. What can Tony Bellew tell him about Usyk that Derek Chisora doesn't already know himself? You know, he, he, Derek Chisora's a lot of people studying Usyk, but I don't want to hear people coming out with all this. Derek Chisora beats Usyk. It's all a load of rubbish. If Derek Chisora beat Usyk, it would be... Are they peppers? They're peppers them Rocky, aren't they? Peppers. If Derek Chisora beat Ulsek, it would be it would be on it'd be equivalent to it'd be equivalent to Ruiz beating Joshua, I think. We're talking about a gold medal Olympian here, aren't we? Who say? Who just ran through cruiserweight division like Olafield and David A did? So it'd be big news. Brook and Quig headlining is this recycled rubbish? Yeah, it is, isn't it? We're a bit fed up a bit now, aren't we? Uh, that one done. So we're on to the next one now, let's have a look. Is that a two sheeter? One sheeter. Uh, so I think that's about it really now. Should we have a take a break, Rocky? Should we have a Kit Kat? Well what what do you think? Where? You wanna go out? You wanna go out for a walk? You wanna go in the garden? Are you? Are you okay? You wanna drink a water? Yeah, you wanna drink a water? Mickers. Mickers. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. And we'll continue. We'll continue with this. Uh, later. Alright. Peace out.